Hola. It's so awesome how books can change your life and change who you are as a person. And if you have never experienced this, read a fucking book for once. Today I want to philosophize with you about the 10 books that have influenced my life the most. This is a booktubing tag that says not to tell you why they've influenced me. I'm telling you. And if you read these books and experienced different things, then let me know in the comment section how your experience of them has been different than mine. So let's start with number 10 being the least, most influential, to number 1 being my soul printed in book format. Number 10 is Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling. The Harry Potter book series is the reason why I read in the first place and that I speak good English, kind of. When I first read this book, I actually read it in Spanish, the first one, and even though I've been exposed to books and stories and poems at school, written words had never spoken to me like this beautiful, magical thing did. And then, like I told you in another video, reading the Harry Potter book series helped me learn English. It helped me to learn how to put complex sentences and paragraphs together. And the more I got to reading the series, even though I didn't understand much of the plot, the more I liked reading in general and the more I liked to speak English out loud. Even though those are pretty big things to change about your life, I kind of feel like, depending on the circumstances, they could have been any other books. So I put them at the bottom of my list, but they definitely are some of the most influential. Number 9 is White Oleander by Janet Fitch. This book helped me as a female when I was in high school a lot. Growing up, I didn't really have a close relationship with my mom, so I couldn't really ask her like very intimate questions. And you know, she still hasn't talked to me about sex either, so it's not like it's changed that much anyway. But by reading this book, I kind of felt like I was getting the advice of a mother in the reading format and if you read this book you know what i'm talking about astrid lives in a lot of foster homes and at every home there's a different kind of woman ultimately all of these women influence astrid but she's left to decide which kind of room she wants to be and how she wants to behave in relation to other people and men specifically and as a high school girl those were really powerful things to explore along with the main character number eight is the catcher in the rye by jd salinger Reading The Catcher in the Rye was like reading my soul in high school. Because I didn't feel really confident about my English, I was very withdrawn and depressed and just generally unsatisfied with everything around me in high school. So I was like the female Holden Caulfield, basically. Reading this book made me feel understood and like there are other people like me that are very introspective and just generally at odds with everyone around them and when you're in high school you need that so much you need to know that other people are experiencing life just the way that you do and that you're not the only weirdo number seven is a clockwork orange by anthony Burgess. what stuck with me about this book was that line where alex says am i just to be a clockwork orange i've always had this great frustration with the world and how it expects us to behave like machines it just expects us to wake up go to work 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 eat work 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 sleep do it over and over and over and over again and somehow we're supposed to like live happily ever after lives and just after reading that line i've been on this quest to find things that don't expect me to behave like a machine to just put numbers in a bank account for myself and for somebody else like i've been on a quest to find things that make me feel human number six is la vida es sueño by pedro calderon it literally means Life is a dream. This is a play I had to read for class. Reading this book made me think that there are the dreams that you experience while you're asleep and then there are the dreams that you experience while you're awake as your reality. And if you want to change the reality you're experiencing, you have to begin by changing your thoughts. You have to dream the reality you want to actually experience. Obviously, this was a very inspiring takeaway from a book. And ever since then, I make sure to dream and dream so much about what kind of life I want to live. Because although I have no control what things come my way, I can have control about what things I accept to have in my life and what matches with those things that I have in my head. I don't know, it just kind of, for me, it kind of works as a, some kind of a guideline about my life. Number five is Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas by Hunter S. Thompson. This book was a big influence in how I write and how I see myself when i read this book i was very much hurt by another person and i was feeling so much anxiety about school and work that i just saw all my thoughts written down in this book i love the extent to which hunter explores the paranoia and the fear that you feel as a person whether there are drugs involved or not and this book kind of made me realize those are the kind of things i've 
always gravitated to in terms of what kind of things I like to read, what kind of artists I like to follow. And it was like a duh moment. Up to that point, I'd never considered writing about my fears because I didn't want to be seen as emo. But the moment I let myself write about more vulnerable things, I wrote the best things I've ever written for my college classes in terms of like my creative writing classes. Number four is a new earth, awakening to your life's purpose by Eckhart Tolle. I don't know if that's how you say his name, but that's how I'm saying it. And the title of this book is misleading because it's not about like finding what you want to do in life, like finding your passion or nothing like that. This book is kind of a hardcore like spiritual book. It's basically about reaching enlightenment in your everyday life. The book explains kind of how your ego works and so that you can understand why your thinking goes so negatively on a day-to-day -day basis and then you can stop it by being aware of it. Like for example, when you see someone and you kind of feel threatened on a subconscious level, you have those ugly judgmental thoughts. And I have one of those the other day on the subway when this girl got on and I was and because I've read this book, I can immediately stop what I'm thinking and kind of realize like, damn, my ego right now is feeling a little inferior, it's feeling threatened. And just because somebody else has positives doesn't take positives away from me. And so I need to stop thinking that and let this person be and let that judgment go. And that's changed me so much because on a day-to-day -day basis, I can find peace because my head it tends to be so negative sometimes and I could just spiral down. And because I read this book, not only can I make sense of those ugly thoughts, but I can stop like hating myself when I have them. Because I don't have those thoughts because I'm a horrible person. I have them because that's just how our ego is supposed to work. And to be conscious of your own thinking is not easy at all, but this book teaches you how to understand your thinking. And basically why it says awakening to your life's purpose is because our purpose is to be present every moment of our lives and to fully enjoy our every day. We're down to our top three and my top three most influential books I read during the same exact summer so they all came at me to fuck me up at the same time. So you're gonna kind of see overlapping themes within the three of them but they all influenced me so differently so here we go. Number three we have Choke by Chuck Palahniuk. Pol Palahniuk? I don't know how to say it. We're gonna stick with Palahniuk. This book was a slap in the face. I never really understood why throughout my life People have been singling me out, outing me really, as the weird one. Until I read this beauty. Until I understood that I loved this book for its dark and philosophical tone. Or presenting taboo subjects in a casual and lighthearted manner. Like they're no big deal really. Like there are just some people in the world that do random things. Like the character in this book just happens to be a sex addict. And we just kind of follow along with his life. So suddenly it clicked with me that I'm into things that not everybody is into, especially A, girls, and B, girls with angelic faces like mine. And even though my mom always told me like, you always like things that no one else likes, it didn't really click with me that, okay, maybe I actually do. I don't know, just suddenly reading this book, it clicked to me that I'm not your traditional girl, and that's fine. It was just so liberating to understand that for myself and to stop trying to hide the odd ways that I have. And in the words of Celia Hodes, to just let my freak flag fly. And Chuck Palahniuk has been so influential in my writing. By reading his books, I've learned to kind of only write the essential and write direct sentences, write what I want and mean to say. The reason Choke is my number three and not Fight Club is because I saw Fight Club so many times before I read the book that I don't remember the book influencing me. I remember the movie changing my life. I know that's a sin. For my number two, I have A Strange Labor by Karl Marx. I know I'm cheating. This is not a book. It's an essay, but I don't care. It's in this list and it's my number two. It's in a freaking book if that counts. Also, before you leave me any comments about communism, just listen to what I have to say because it has nothing to do with communism. What I loved about this writing piece was the explanation it gave on what the effect uh, that industrialization had on the human psyche. And the line that most inspired me was, if you are not affirming who you are, you're by default denying yourself. And that is in regards to our work. Because in the past, somebody did the job from beginning to end, you feed the cow, you raise the cow, you kill the cow, you cut the meat, and then you sell or trade the meat, you feel proud about your work. But now that we all do just one thing over and over and over, 
we're not satisfied with our lives and that's why people run to food and drugs and sex to fill in those voids. Reading this fucked me up. I can't unthink that and now I'm on a quest to find a job and even just activities for myself that make me feel whole and don't make me feel like I said before like a machine. Number one is the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Stig Lars. I think that's how you say it. First of all, growing up, I didn't really have many women to look up to. I only had women that were very sexual or women that all they want is just to find a guy, have babies, get married, be a housewife. And I'm neither one of those things. And as a result, I mostly looked up to men, male rock stars, male writers, male revolutionaries. So what the freaking girl with a dragon tattoo did for me was actually give me a kind of woman I would like to be. And that's a badass bitch. A badass bitch is somebody that refuses to conform to other people's expectations, especially in regards to gender. I was so inspired reading this book and discovering this character because even though she suffers because she's misunderstood due to her odd ways about her, those odd ways are exactly what makes her a fighter and the reason she's able to not just fight for herself when she's in dangerous situations, but also fight for other people that are unable to fight themselves. And that's something that really resonated with me. Because girls are always told to be this way, do this thing, say this, don't say that. And in a much more direct way that guys, I think, are told those things. I always hated that and I always didn't fit in those boxes. And I was just so unhappy trying to be all those things that people are trying to tell me to be and do. And then you have this bitch who doesn't give a fuck. I know this is a fictional character, but to me that was so life-changing that a girl could be anything she wants to be. And that her gender didn't define her, just like it doesn't define me. I read this book when I was in a sorority, and I was so frustrated trying to hide all the rules I was breaking and trying to follow all of the things that I was supposed to follow. And this book just kind of made me say, like, fuck it. Now it's my life's purpose to be a fucking badass bitch and I don't know what kind of badass bitch I'm gonna be yet but I'm gonna be my kind and not try to be what anybody else tells me to do.